Welcome to Dr. Lottie Science with Soul. I'm Dr. Lottie and the host of this podcast. I'm a physician, medical intuitive, evidential psychic medium, international keynote speaker, and author of Med School After Menopause, The Journey of My Soul, an inspirational story about transformation, healing, and spirituality, which won first place in the category of spiritual leadership in August 2021 from Living Now Book Awards. This award recognizes truly world-changing books that contribute to positive global change. The inspiration for this podcast came from my own life experiences. As I have journeyed through life, it has taught me that we're part of a greater divine web of interconnectedness. I have walked the path of illness, healing, and transformation. After two near-death experiences, I became clairvoyant, clairaudient, and clairsentient, and was guided to attend medical school at the age of 54. We will be meeting with many different types of doctors, healers, as well as spiritual leaders, educators, and other inspiring souls in this podcast. It is my hope that you will gain information and create a path to healing your own life physically, emotionally, and spiritually, and bridge the gap between science and soul. If you are a person who understands the interconnectedness of mind, body, and soul, and would like to take one of my courses or work with me to create a path of healing your own life, please visit divinespiritualessence.com or drlaudi.com. To stay up to date on future episodes and to help us reach a larger audience, remember to subscribe, review, and share this podcast as well as subscribing to my newsletter at divinespiritualessence.com. Welcome to Dr. Lottie's Science with Soul. I am Dr. Lottie and the host of this podcast. Today, I'm really excited to introduce Dr. Jennifer Lee, who received her doctorate in physical therapy from Washington University in St. Louis, Missouri. And she is the owner of L2E Physical Therapy in Peoria, Arizona. She began her career in an outpatient orthopedic physical therapy clinic, focusing on injuries and imbalances of the musculoskeletal system. This led her to completion of a fellowship in applied functional science through the Gray Institute, where she studied the three-dimensional connection of the human body specific to the musculoskeletal system and learned to better ask and answer the question why someone would experience pain and dysfunction compared to our traditional medical model, which focuses on the what is hurting and symptom resolution. Later studies at the Boral Institute taught her that the question why cannot always be answered by addressing the musculoskeletal system as the true root cause of some patient's pain stems from the restrictions or previous trauma to the nervous system, cranium, visceral organs, fascia, or is rooted in emotional trauma stored in the body. The work to determine the true root cause of someone's suffering, particularly chronic pain, anxiety, or emotionally rooted pain, often requires more time and a softer, quieter environment than is typical of the outpatient orthopedic clinical setting. Each of her patients receives an hour of one-on-one care with a goal of letting the patient's body be in a safe environment where it can communicate what it needs in order to function at an optimal efficiency. Her passion is to create healing and to incorporate the totality of an individual's physical, mental, and emotional experience, and to allow each patient the time and care they deserve in order to understand the story of their bodies and find the answers as to why they are experiencing pain. So welcome, Jennifer. I'm really excited to have you as a guest today. Thank you, Dr. Lottie. I'm super, super excited to be here. Thanks for having me. So, let me ask you, how has your experience and education transformed your practice? And how does that differentiate you in the world of physical therapy? 
That's a great question. I was just going to say it's it's interesting to hear your own story read back to you <laughs> of your education and the, the way that things have changed for me. Um, I would say for those that don't aren't as familiar with what physical therapy is, uh, historically, physical therapy was more of a passive type of intervention for people. So people would come in, get ultrasounds, get massages, um, and you're working on people to try and get symptom resolution, like I said in my bio. By the time I got my doctorate in 2010, it was already kind of shifting uh, to more of an active focus. So we need to understand the body. We need to understand that the kinetic chain is what we call it, how it works as a, in a sequential order, um, and really understand the three-dimensional impact of the body and why somebody would have pain as opposed to just what is hurting and massaging that until it feels better. Um, and so that was my hope and my expectation when I started my career. Um, I would say through much failure and frustration, I, I was seeing over and over that in the realm that I was in, seeing as many patients per day as we had to see um, led you to chasing symptoms and doing, trying to do what I would call quick fixes um, to try and get people to feel better while they were in the clinic because you had 15 to 20 minutes with them. Um, and that was very frustrating for me. Uh, so that's what led me into the, the fellowship and the fellowship. Actually, I always tell people, if you find yourself getting burnt out, if you find the joy, find the fun in what you do again. And so instead of just giving people things and getting frustrated, I started to ask the question, why again, why are they having the pain? Slow my day down, um, uh, which was hard to do in that setting. And over the course of the, I did that fellowship in 2014. So over the course of the last seven years, it's evolved to understanding that why isn't always in what I would call the container. It's not always in the musculoskeletal system. And as a matter of fact, most of the time it isn't, particularly in chronic pain uh, patients. But that has led me on a passionate pursuit of how do we help the people that otherwise the system has failed, uh, that end up on sometimes multiple pain injections, going to pain centers, um, getting needless imaging. How do we actually create a space where we can tap into what is the deepest rooted cause of their tags, different tags in their system? And I can get into that a little bit too. And how do we start to unwind the system and give it more freedom and mobility? And so the way that I practice is like mentioned in my bio, I'm, I'm giving a full hour to people. I'm taking my time. Uh, I created the space that I have in my office specifically to cater to people with anxiety issues that need quiet, um, that are in a lot of pain and their systems are already upregulated. Um, and, and so far, so great. I've loved, I've loved continuing chasing this passion and, and doing what I do. So yeah. That's where I'm at. So when you're working um, in your clinic, your own clinic now, mm -hmm. what are the typical things that people come in for and say, you know, I have this, this problem. What are the problems that you typically see? Oh, great question. Um, goodness. Ooh, the, the word typical is hard anymore because I have people with a multitude of different diagnoses, pains. Um, I see anything from tinnitus, a ringing in the ears, to history of concussion, brain fog, um, to chronic migraines, to difficulty breathing, a lot of GI issues, IBS issues, any musculoskeletal issue, issue that you can think of, um, foot pain, ankle pain, hip pain, spine, chronic back pain, um, it runs the gamut. And particularly pain that hasn't been amenable to any other intervention. So by the time people get to me, they're like, all right, they're frustrated. It's their last straw. Somebody told them to try me out, <laughs> 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 which you're familiar with. <laughs> yeah. 
but I see so it it's runs not together. just uh, it's not just hip pain, back pain, neck no. pain, or you know things that most people think of when they think of physical therapy, or they Correct. were in an accident or anything like that. It could really be anything. Yes, literally anything. I have people come to me that their main concern is anxiety, uh, but it wreaks havoc on their body because they end up with very tight paraspinal muscles in their back, chronic back pain, difficulty breathing. Um, it, as, as we know, it, it manifests mental, mental things manifest in the body and vice versa. And so, uh, yeah, really anything, really. So what, anything. Yeah. So what do you typically find then? Is it the different holding patterns that's causing that pain or everybody is so different. Um, I would say there are certain patients that have pain patterns that are unrecognizable in the world of physical therapy. Our job is to, in the world of, in the medical model, our job is to look for patterns. Like what is the pattern of this? Does it match this? Is it appendicitis? Is it low back pain? Is it a herniated disc? And we do these tests to try to figure it out. Um, and typically people that don't have that pattern, there's no way that you can reproduce it. It comes on very randomly or it's all the time and they can't alleviate it. Uh, you're either dealing with something that is actually surgical operative um, or probably has some kind of nervous system and or anxiety, emotional component to it from what I've seen, um, at least in my practice thus far. Um, but there are a lot of those people out there and they get very frustrated and rightly so because we don't have a model at this point that really validates the totality of someone. And so I think being in my space allows somebody, it's hard for people to actually be validated in that way when that's not the norm. Um, it takes them a little bit to kind of shake off and realize, oh, this is not like, she's not telling me I'm quote unquote crazy. It's not in my head. Like it's literally in my body because of a cascade of, of hormones through my body. And so, yeah, it's, it's a trip to work with people. It's really, really it's the passion of my life for sure. It's, yeah, it, it's, it is fascinating. Um, there are so many uh, patients that they go through, like you said, the normal route and then, you know, finding somebody like you that can see the problem from a different angle because yeah. our education in the Western medical model is very much like you said in your bio, uh, you know, what, what, what's the problem? And then here's the medication. Right. And it's yeah. not really, it doesn't, it never goes to the root cause or figuring out what's causing it in the first place. And let's fix that. So you can get off yeah. your medications and then have a great life. Yeah. 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 And it's, that's not an easy journey for the provider either. Like if it, if a lot of talk I do is patient specific, but for a provider that's in that realm, um, burnout happens a lot. <laughs> People get so burnt out from, cause we, everyone's trying, we get into this because we're servants and we want to nurture people. And so to be frustrated, to not be able to help people on that level is uh, something I've experienced before. And it's, it's a big part of what's driven me to where I'm at right now, but it's, it's a real thing. The real frustration from the provider's side to not be able to help to just have to speak to that a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> we so want to help everybody. All right. So now you spend a whole hour with a patient one-on-one -on -one. I when do, you yeah. worked in a traditional outpatient orthopedic clinic, how much time would you get with a patient? I would get on average uh, 15 to 20, 25 minutes, maybe. If I went 30 with someone that made me behind um, in that type, type of realm, it depends on, on where a clinician would work and the structure of that company. Uh, but oftentimes your first day is your longest day um, with, with the actual provider. Um, we had an hour for evaluations, but then when people would come in for follow-ups, it was, you may have somebody doubled and say so have two people coming in at the half hour. So that definitely splits it unless one person doesn't need your hands-on work, um, quote unquote, doesn't need your hands-on work, <laughs> yeah. um, which to me the at this point, so. <laughs> I'm such a manual therapist that I'm, I'm sorry, the power of touch to me is just beyond anything. Um, and so, yeah, an average probably 15 minutes towards the end of my time, 
at the place that I used to work, I would slow everything down. Now the pandemic, you're never going to hear this phrase hardly anywhere. The pandemic helped my day because we had to go to one hour with people. Uh, and that really kind of helped me shine the light on like, wait a second, this is actually what you want. <laughs> uh, this is the actual structure that you want. This is not going to be maintained. Um, and so off I went. And, and that's minutes. what led you to open your own practice. You got it. Yep. <laughs> that's a fascinating route to get to. <laughs> Yeah, you know, how you yep. saw it. Yeah. So yeah. you you mentioned in your um, bio that you also studied at the Baral Institute. So yeah. what coursework have you done with them, and how has this transformed your current practice? Great. Um, so the Baral Institute, B A R R A L. If anybody wants to look it up, um, was founded by Jean Pierre Baral, who is an osteopath who lives in France, a French man. Um, and he, that institute is under a huge broad umbrella called the Upledger Institute. And they offer a ton of coursework, but I've taken neural, what's called neural manipulation. Um, that is the very specific understanding of how to feel a peripheral, a small nerve, all the way up to the entirety of the nervous system, and to be able to release the nervous system, work with the nervous system, find tiny, what we call nerve buds in the system that actually are the source of pain with, with some patients, and to release them at the nerve level. Now, that is very different than what people are typically used to hearing. Um, I'll give an example. If anybody's heard of the diagnosis piriformis syndrome, um, it's commonly attached to a sciatica diagnosis, but what is commonly thought is that the actual piriformis, the muscle called the piriformis in your glute is trapping the sciatic nerve and causing sciatic pain. Um, we flip that in the Baral Institute to prioritize the nerves above all because they are very vital and muscles in general are reactors. They react to movement, they react to the rest of the system, they are not actors on their own. And so uh, piriformis syndrome for me means the sciatic nerve is adhered, is stuck, is restricted somewhere along its path or the nervous system, somewhere along the totality of the entirety of the system. And my job is to find exactly where that is, tap into it, and then release it. Nerves should have an actual expansion and retraction phase. They should have a little bit of a sliding glide. When that gets restricted for whatever reason, um, then that creates issue because it takes away from the entirety of the movement of the nervous system. So people can present with a sciatica that have a restriction actually in their neck or their cranium. Um, but that's what neural manipulation is. Uh, visceral manipulation, is another set of coursework that I'm into. And it is the, the same type of idea, but it's very specific to the visceral organs and the fascia surrounding the visceral organs. And so people that have had a history of gut surgery and now have like a colon resection and now have gut issues, um, people who have had cardiac surgeries before, um, really any, any type of surgery, stomach surgery, C-sections, where they get restrictions in the actual mobility and motility of that tissue. And it impacts the pressure system of the body. It impacts the mobility of those tissues and those tissues being vital. I always say it's kind of like a card game. Like if you and I are playing cards, then every time I lay down a vital organ, that's going to trump whatever card you have that's a muscle. And so if I have an issue with my kidney, then all the muscles surrounding my kidney or even close to it aren't going to want to compress it because it's way too vital. And so muscles like your quadratus lumborum and muscles like your psoas actually get inhibited. They go into spasm or they just shut down completely because they're not going to push on that kidney. And so then you have people coming into your clinic saying, I have back pain, I have hip pain. Um, how do you actually get to the cause of it, the root source of it? How do I get to the kidney? How do I find what the root of the kidney restriction is and how do I release that to get it, get its natural mobility back just like the nervous system. Yeah, and then uh, another course that I've also worked with is called Energetic Balancing. It's through a different institute, it's called the D'Ambrosio Institute, um, but that is the use of quantum physics 
to actually align with somebody, uh, get yourself calibrated with someone and be able to, if you've heard of applied kinesiology, like being able to ask your system yes or no, it's literally being able to do that through someone else's body. So being able to feel yeses and nos in someone's system to be able to sometimes differentiate what kind of pain, where something is at, what emotion is held in a tissue uh, and be able to release from there. And so those are kind of the three um, outside of the musculoskeletal realm classes that I've taken um, or multiple classes that I've taken under the Brawl Institute. Yeah. So if you get somebody that has, let's say, anxiety, a lot of anxiety and panic attacks. They come in and they say, I'm having those issues. Mm -hmm. Where, where do you start? Yeah. Um, so the very first thing I ever do with anyone, uh, which is very different than a regular physical therapy visit is to have them take off their shoes, take off watch, take off glasses, um, relax, stand if they're able and close their eyes if they're able. Uh, and I put my hand on their head and do what's called a listening. Now the listening to me tells me the line of tension that pulls in their body, how far it goes in their body and where it stops. Um, I take that and I write that down on my paper and it does not matter to me from that point on their subjective. So I have this, I have that, I have all of these chronic conditions. It may just be ankle pain, something like that whatever I feel in the listening is the direction I go in treatment. And so in your case, if somebody has anxiety and panic, and that is the priority restriction in the system, oftentimes it will be because it tends to take over when it's that bad, then you'll actually feel a buzzing in that listening. I get like a, almost a sense of, I, put stuck my finger in a little light socket. <laughs> you feel that through like the entirety buzz. of the yeah. system. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and then I take a while because having anxiety myself, I understand physiologically what it is, but even more than that, I understand the spectrum that it can be and that someone needs to be feel safe in order to allow their system to calm down. And so I don't go into treatment right away with some of those patients. I do a lot of education. I do a lot of hands-on, like let them get used to my touch and things like that, depending on what, what somebody's comfortable with. But I educate them on what is, what's the autonomic nervous system? And what are the branches of the autonomic nervous system? And what happens when the sympathetic, everybody's heard of fight or flight. <laughs> um, what happens when the fight, the flight, the freeze, the fawn, uh, when those are upregulated in a system, what does that look like in the physical body? Um, how would someone present? What changes happen through the body? And why does that make me feel the way that I feel right now? And then what are our options as far as down training that? and then up training, up regulating the parasympathetic nervous system. A lot of people don't um, quite put this together yet. I think we're on the verge of doing a lot more with this. And honestly, the pandemic is, has been a push because there's a lot of people that have gotten anxiety and or panic as a result of the pandemic and rightly so. Um, but there is more of an understanding of, or there needs to be more of an understanding that the, the parasympathetic nervous system is a huge, has a huge component in the ability to heal, the ability to relax, the ability for gut function to be normalized. And so if you take somebody that's constantly anxious, uh, their digestive system is going to be slow. <laughs> it just <laughs> is. Immune function is going to decrease because they're not, you're in a survival state all of the mm -hmm. time and, and your body is not prioritizing digestive function and immunity. Your body is prioritizing where's the threat all of the time. Um, and that can turn into a chronic thing where it's basically, I just say to my patients all the time, the gas pedal is stuck down. We have to learn how to either get the gas pedal down or find the brake and then be able to find that because you want both. Obviously we need both, um, for survival. Um, but you don't want to be too heavy in one. You want it to be a nice balance and a dance. And so, Yeah. That's it is fascinating because you mentioned, you know, digestive problems, but 
I think a lot of people maybe that are listening never thought that that um, subconscious anxiety or a fight or flight that they put themselves in. And I tell people, it doesn't matter if it's you're in the jungle running from the lion or if it's the stack of papers on your desk, your nervous exactly. system doesn't know the difference. They're sitting in traffic. Fight or yep. flight, got to run. And so exactly. the body gets into that hamster wheel and they're just running. Yep. And then it's a habit too, I think for many people that they feel normal when they're, when they're running in the hamster wheel at full speed, mm -hmm. that's, mm -hmm. you know, the adrenaline is pumping and they're wondering why they're having digestive issues. So it's just fascinating yeah. that, um, you're getting these people, you know, into the clinic. So yeah, it's good for me yeah. to know you're right here in Phoenix. So that's right. That's <laughs> right. I tell people I'm, I'm very visual and I like people to understand kind of from multiple angles, what is going on. And so I will ask a lot of times, have you, most people have watched the Olympics. So have you watched the Olympics? Yes, I have the summer games. Have you watched a race? Yes. Okay. Can you picture somebody at the starting line? Yes. Okay. So what would you say about their body? Just their physical body at that point. Like, okay. It's very rigid. They're in a stance. They're on their toes. They're ready. They're focused. They're looking down the line. They're only like, they're not going to hear somebody screaming their name to the right. Cause it's just all this focus this one thing right now so that is a regulation of the sympathetic nervous system your body is ready to race go at any given second you even see postural changes where people are on their toes all the time well now i have plantar fasciitis now i have achilles tendonitis um and it's all a result sometimes not all the time um but a lot of times a result of the body being upregulated consistently your identity being attached to it like you said mm -hmm. oh it's my job to hyper function like I'm the hyper functioning mom and I just go all day all day every day it's like oh mm -hmm. how do you break that down how do you validate that that say there's a way that you can give yourself time um and that is a hard thing for people to do uh, in this day and age is to is to stop to stop to sit mm -hmm. to breathe um, but it's an absolutely necessary thing from a vital standpoint. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. You mentioned also that, um, some people started to experience anxiety and panic attacks, um, as a result of the pandemic. Yeah. So in your opinion, has the pandemic had an impact on people physically? What have you seen? <laughs> uh, 1000 times. Yes. It absolutely, there's no way it couldn't, there's no way it couldn't. We've never been in anything like this. And um, my personal opinion is when you aren't sure from a scientific standpoint, but you try to give the best information that you can, people that need certainty don't get certainty. That will give you anxiety. When I don't 100% know how long, what this is gonna do to my system long-term, that can give you anxiety. Um, now I'm not sure if I'm gonna keep my job okay, that gives you anxiety. Now I have financial stresses or now I work from home and I have three kids and a dog that run around all day. That's a little stressful. And <laughs> there is really no angle. I haven't seen untouched from the, from the pandemic for people. It changes exercise regimens. It changes ability to go to the gym, it changes my social outlets. It changes what I did to actually relax and hang out with friends. Now my friends are all worried and they don't want to see me and uh, the guilt associated if you have had it, um, all of that, or if you know somebody that's had it and not done well, um, all of that are, can, are all of those are very valid contributing factors to what I've seen through the course of this. Um, and it's honestly part of the reason I started this when I did, because my own history of anxiety creates, this is my love affair. It's like, <laughs> I used to call it my gift and my curse. Um, I no longer really see it as a curse. I just see it as this is my story. This is what I have. Um, but it also allows me to feel it, to see it in other people, to treat it in other people, to arm people with strategies to help 
control it, to understand it, to bring it in and talk to it like you would a little kid and try to understand what's going on um, and to be soft with it as opposed to trying to numb it, trying to distract from it, trying to quote unquote fix it. Um, so, yeah. Wow. Yeah, your work sounds so deep. Are the <laughs> manipulations you do, you know, painful for the organs or nerves? Oh, um, no, no. The work that I do is can be extremely deep. The kidneys are what we call retroperitoneal. So they are 70 to 80%. If you're starting from the stomach, 70 to 80% down into the, the abdomen. Um, but the work that I do is not a compressive work. You're actually sinking gently through the tissues to get to the specific area that you need to get to. So uh, the example I gave you earlier, the listening, if I had somebody um, that actually gave me a listening to the deep part of the abdomen where the kidneys lie, uh, then I'm actually going to position them in a way that I can access that area and get very specific with exactly where I want to work um, and, and work with the tissue in a way that's going to allow me to intend upon it without over compressing it. So none of the work, the nerve work included, is should be painful at all. And I always am checking in with people to make sure this feels good. It should not be painful. Um, but it's not a lot of people will picture digging in with knuckles, digging in with fingertips. None of it is that. It's all very flat hand, gentle work and letting the body show me what it actually wants and what it needs. But great question. Valid question. Right. <laughs> and so the emotions uh, can be the root cause of someone's physical pain. Yes. Um, and oftentimes chronic pain that doesn't respond to conventional intervention. Mm -hmm. So what kind of patients do you see that present with emotionally rooted pain? Um, honestly, I want to say the people that <laughs> there are people that they know it is and they're coming to you because they know it is because they know their body and they're like, oh, dang it. I just fine. Like, <laughs> it's like, I want you to help me and get, get this, get through this. Um, and then there are the people that absolutely there's no way there's no way that there's anything i've gone to therapy i've gone to counseling i've worked through all my stuff there's no way that this is emotionally it's fine um there are those people and both can be emotionally rooted pain um like we've said before if your pain is really random um i've had patients before that no there's no because as physical therapists, we're like, okay, does it hurt when you bend? Does it hurt when you twist? Does it hurt when you lunge? What causes it? Is it laying in bed at night? Is it in the worst in the morning? There aren't those patterns, but you'll hear patterns like, it's every time if I travel, I'm good. And on the way home, on the way home, doesn't matter if I'm flying, if I'm driving on the way home, like, oh, okay. What is it about on the way home? We have to get outside of our physical brain. There's nothing about on the way home that gives you a physical pain pattern on the way home is there's something that you return to that you're associating that's upregulating your system and causing the return of the pain. And so um, looking for patterns kind of like that, sometimes there's no pattern at all, quite frankly. Um, but I don't, in my treatment, I'm not really I'm, I'm keeping an open mind and letting the body tell me where it needs to go and, and what it needs. And so you will have the patient's body show you without a doubt that it's something emotional. Um, quite frankly, if it's, if it's very emotional, if I put my hand on somebody's head and let's say it's about something that happened in their past, their specific past, they will actually start to fall back into me. Um, if it's something that they're worried about, if, if it's somebody we've talked about that has anxiety and a lot of panic, they will fall forward. Anxiety is a forward worry, um, something about the future. And so it, it, it doesn't hide. It comes right out. And then I can, I can feel into the system. Where's the stuck in your system? How do we work this out and just gently allow it to release itself? Just like exercise, it releases itself in a form of heat. It's a very beautiful thing. Um, but it can actually stay in your system long after you think you've actually done and you have done the work to get through it in, in counseling, it will stay in the physical tissues at times. Yeah. 
Yeah, no, it's fascinating because the body and the tissues has that somatic memory. Yeah. And it doesn't matter. Um, I mean, you know, all the different therapies are good for different reasons, but yes. uh, this is such an important part, the work that you do to create um, that true healing, which is down at that tissue level, just like right. When, people, right, when people get heart transplants and you hear the stories of they never drank beer, but now they love beer. Now they love beer. Turns, right. Yes. And it turns the guy whose heart they inherited, <laughs> they got it, you know, in the surgery, the guy loved beer. And yes. so those, the memories of other people, right. Are we've yeah. seen that in, in transplants of different organs. And now all of a sudden that person has memories, which came from with the organ in the mm -hmm. tissues, that memory mm -hmm. was stored there. So of course, anything that we have experienced, it's going to get stored all in all different ways in different parts of the body. That's so. what's amazing to me. I will never stop being completely amazed by it, but yeah, I had, I've actually found um, through my own patients over the course of time that the body will, <laughs> it, it's so smart that it will hide emotional, it will hide its own emotion in what you would also use to describe pain in that physical area. Um, so somebody that has a lot of tension in their shoulders and their traps in their neck. Um, emotionally, what would we say we do with our arms and, and our shoulders all the time? We carry things with them. We hold things with them. People are carrying too much. They're holding too much. There's too much of a burden going on. Um, people with low back pain, low back tension, uh, feel at the, at the core of the body, um, will feel unsupported will feel insecure. Um, it's, it's no coincidence where the body holds, where, where it holds emotional rooted pain. Um, and so once you get to that, just working through that is, uh, it, it is, I do want to say it's not, it's not counseling. And I want to definitely differentiate that because there's a validity, uh, to mentally working through, um, events in, in your life for sure. The body what I do is I'm not making people talk through things that have happened. I'm saying, okay, this particular emotion is stuck in your pancreas, is stuck in your small intestine. Um, don't need to know anything about it. We're just going to be present with it and basically call it out, play hide and seek with it and allow it to release. And it does. Um, and it's a beautiful, beautiful thing. I've had people um, with shoulder pain for 20 years. Um, one that every time she didn't feel like she was enough as a mother, I'm not doing enough, I'm not doing enough. Now my shoulder, my, sh my shoulder blade hurt and get really tight, but it's not doing anything with like the massage and trigger point and dry needling and therapy. And none of this is helping. Um, I've had somebody with terror, um, in their pelvic floor and not amenable, had surgeries, had multiple interventions and all along it's this rooted no wait I've gone through counseling I've done all the work yes but your body hasn't you have to validate that for your body it's 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 it works everything works together but it's its own entity at the same time and it's a beautifully intelligent entity so yeah I hear so. you it's a, <laughs> I mean it's what I work with too and I mean I see the same story mm -hmm. and that way that people are dealing with holding things like you said in their shoulders or uh, solar plexus or low back uh it is absolutely true i see i'm not working with physical therapy but i see it in other work um that i yeah. work that i do and it's fascinating because these coping mechanisms i tell people you this was just something you learned as a child this was how you coped with reality and this <laughs> is just how you know, you're, you're still doing that because it becomes the subconscious reaction. Yeah, and, absolutely it absolutely does. And, yep. You know, every time you're tense as a child, this is what you did. You tense your, sh your shoulders, your neck or your low back or whatever the problem is. You're lacking that core, right? So you said yeah. the low back pain, that core, which comes from, they saw is, can be like a mother wound, right? So they, absolutely. Don't, they, don't get, the, they don't get that nurturing, the love and 
uh, support that they needed as a young infant or toddler, or maybe mm-hmm. the mother was hospitalized, maybe the mother was working, they were sent away to live with the grandparents, could be anything. Yeah. But yeah. that what comes from that then is that lack, like you were mentioning, that lack of core, um, which is their true, um, you know, stability in life, they don't have that core. And then it's fascinating to hear you say then that that's what you see with the low back pain, Mm -hmm. those problems. uh, Right. So it's like tying it all together that a mental, emotional and spiritual component, and then expresses in our physical bodies as something. And then we go to the doctor and then they miss it because in Western medicine, we don't, we don't even touch upon these subjects in medical because there's way too much information that we have to learn about all different diseases and make sure that, you know, you're not missing something and somebody's going to die or end up in the ER because you missed something and it's way too much information. And we, we can't even get to this part of, of thinking holistically body, mind, spirit, because it's not even part of med school, not even yes. part of naturopathic <laughs> medical school, right? Preach it, Dr. There's Lally, no preach it. <laughs> yeah, there's no time. Hey, we had 12 no. finals, you know, in a week, those 11 yeah. week, four, you know, four 11 week sessions in a year with 12 finals in, in a week. I mean, how do you even study for that? That the pace of medical school and the amount of information you have to learn, there is no, um, they, they, you know, that's what we need in medicine to tie it all together because yeah. so many people get missed. They go to the doctor and then they don't get the right diagnosis. The mm-hmm. problem is never resolved. So that's what I um, love about the work that I do now. One of the taglines for any Brawl Institute work, um, he says, feel first, think later. So your job is to actually, it's very counterintuitive for a provider to turn their brain off. I was yeah. used to, what are, their, what are they gonna say? What's their pain like? Is it sharp? Is it throbbing? Is it achy? Okay, that means that it could be nerve. Okay, then da, 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 da. And I'm thinking all of these things. Yeah. And now the way I treat it is stop. You should be clear, completely clear. Listen to their system. And if it doesn't say anything, listen again. And if it doesn't say anything again, listen again, put it in a different position. And only at that point, once you feel the system start talking to you and you get to a certain area, now I'm didactic because I do want to understand and put together what is the kidney function or what is the small intestine or duodenum function and what would that inhibit in the system? What would that create in somebody's, you know, changes in somebody's life or in their bowel habits or anything like that? Um, But it's very the the root to um, the root to physical pain that would land you in a doctor's office in a physical therapy clinic is 100% validated in an emotional root meaning if there is an emotional component to it there is no way that your body cannot respond to it and if your body responds to it there is no way that you will not get changes in your system to compensate for that change. It's like spraining an ankle. I emotionally sprained my ankle. Something happened. I got heartbroken. Now I literally changed my posture. Um, I changed the way that I'm sitting because I have acid reflux or something really upset me that the stomach is a very social organ. So issues with social or professional life will sit in the stomach. Now I have acid reflux or I have gastritis. And it changes the way that somebody sits, the way that somebody moves. Well, now I have back pain because I've changed the way that I move or the stomach refers to the shoulder and now I have shoulder pain. And so it is very necessary to know red flags and to be able to think didactically, but you have to be able to feel it first. You have to be able to get there to that specific root in order to actually make the change that's going to sustain as opposed to just feels better for a day, reverts. Yeah. Wow. It's been, <laughs> it's been so great to have you as a guest on the podcast today. Thank you so uh, much. Just amazing. All the, the work that you're doing. So if people are interested in working with you, how do yeah. they find you? What do you have a website? I do. My website is www.l letter L number two letter E pt.com. So L two E pt.com. Uh, on my website, you can schedule an appointment. It takes you to my scheduler. You can also fill out a contact form and I, I will receive that in my email. 
Um, my email, if you just want to email me directly, is jen, J-E-N, at l2ept.com. And I will get back to you within a day, typically. I see four patients a day because the work that I do takes concerted effort and, and a lot of energy. Um, and so I like to make sure that all my patients get 100% from me. So I can see four people a day. Um, but I will get you in as soon as I can. And I, I offer 10 to 15 minute free consults for people to ask me questions as well. So, um, yeah. Wow, that's wonderful. And I'll make sure to also put the link to your website in the podcast notes. Appreciate so you can it. just go to the podcast notes and click on the link and it will take you to her website. So again, uh, thank you so much for being a guest today, Jennifer. It's been wow. just a delight to have you. Thank you. I appreciate it so much. I hope you enjoyed listening to this episode of Dr. Lottie Science with Soul. To stay up to date on future episodes and to help us reach a larger audience, remember to subscribe, review, and share this podcast, as well as subscribing to my newsletter at divinespiritualessence.com. If you are a person who understands the interconnectedness of mind, body, and soul, and would like to take one of my courses or work with me to create a path of healing your own life, please visit divinespiritualessence.com or drlaudie.com. My book, Med School After Menopause, The Journey of My Soul, an inspirational story about transformation, healing, and spirituality, which won first place in the category of spiritual leadership in August 2021 from Living Now Book Awards, is available online at Amazon, as well as other online platforms worldwide. If you are a person who understands the interconnectedness of mind, body, and soul, and would like to take one of my courses or work with me, to create a path of healing your own life, please visit divinespiritualessence.com or drlaudie.com.